To take a skin fold measurements, the patient should be wearing just shorts for men and for women a sports bra or tank top. Make sure to take the measurements on the right side of the body. We will use a caliper to take the measurements in millimeters. Make sure it's calibrated before using it. To take a skin fold measurement, you need to grasp the patient's skin between your tongue and your index. Make sure to take the skin and subcutaneous fat but not muscle. Place the caliper on the skin fold approximately 1 cm away from the tongue and the index finger. Maintain the pitch while reading the caliper, but wait 1 to 2 seconds before reading the final data. The first measurement we are going to take is the tricep fold. It is located on the posterior midline of the upper arm, halfway between the acromion and the olecranon processes. Take a vertical fold with the arm held freely to the side of the body. Now is the chest pectoral fold. For women, take one third distance between the anterior axillary line and the nipple and take a diagonal fold. For men, will be halfway distance. Now is the abdominal side. Take the skin fold approximately 2 cm away from the right side of the umbilicus. Then take a vertical fold and measure. The next measurement would be mid-axillary fold, which is the point of a vertical line from the mid-axillary line and the insertion of the sepoid process. Make a vertical fold and measure. Next is a suprailiac fold. Make a diagonal fold in line with the natural angle of the iliac crest taken in the anterior axillary line. Pinch and measure. The next measurement would be subscapular fold. Tell the patient to fold their arm behind their back. Place a mark 1 to 2 cm below the inferior angle of the scapula. Take a diagonal fold and measure. The last measurement would be on the tie. To minimize the contraction of the tie, the patient should put all the weight on the left foot so the right leg can be at rest. Make a vertical fold in the midpoint between the patella and the hip and measure. Remember to take at least two measurements of these sides and then take the average of all of them. Retest if the measurements are not within 1 to 2 millimeters and make sure to rotate through all the measurement sites. Finally, the accuracy of this technique is plus minus 3.5 percentage, assuming it's being used the proper technique. When we have all the measurements, we can calculate body density and then body fat percentage. But there are some factors that would affect the accuracy of these measurements. These are the technique, if the patient is extremely obese or extremely lean, and the calibration. Since we use seven sites measurements, we have to use the following formulas. There are two different formulas for body density, one for males and one for females. After getting the body density, we can calculate the percentage of body fat using the Brasek and City formulas.